I explored the fume chamber using both the paper towel and the ammonia bath. I wanted to see if there was any difference between using paper towel or a bath as an ammonia delivery method. Then I let them cook. Cook? Cook. I like to call the patina process, or the chemical reaction, cooking. How do you know when it's done cooking? Depending on a number of factors, cook times being one of them, I found a single patina recipe could yield a range of effects. So when it comes to knowing when the patina is finished cooking, it really depends on the effect you're looking for. This is when research and sample making become invaluable. I'd never done this before, and I wasn't sure what to expect, but a dark olive brown began to form. After five hours, I pulled the copper out of the fume chambers and let them dry for 24 hours. The result, a somewhat disappointing, dusty olive brown, but very encouraging. I cooked up a few more samples from five hours to 480 hours, or 20 days. After five hours, there's not much of a difference between the paper towel fume chamber and the bath fume chamber. At six hours, the disappointing dusty olive brown is turning into a lovely fog of blues, greens, and olive brown. Add yet one more hour and our lovely fog of blues and greens have disappeared. Replaced with a muddy wash of blue-green, we jump ahead from seven hours to 16 hours and the landscape has changed remarkably now resembling an acid-washed universe full of heavenly bodies. Or at least that's what I see. I also see a flying dog. At 29 hours, the heavenly bodies have retreated, replaced by a gloomy, moody, dark green, with the exception of side B on the paper towel fume chamber sample, which is a bit brighter with flashes of blue. After 46 hours, we finally see a marked difference between the two fume chamber methods the paper towel method staying with shades of greens, and the bath method moving into shades of blues. And we're back to a very spacey, abstract landscape. At 73 hours, a change in color and textures, most notable, side A of the bath fume chamber, has developed a dark blue crust of scale-like shards, while side A of the paper towel fume chamber has also developed blue scales, but much smaller and fewer. 96 hours and gone are the scales. Again, we see a marked difference in the colors, the paper towel fume chamber with bright green and bits of indigo blue, and the bath fume chamber dominated by various shades of blue. Take a big jump in cooking time to 240 hours and a new color appears, a brilliant lemon olive green. A very dramatic patina as it first formed a crunchy dark blue shell, something very new, and I wasn't entirely sure what to do with it. I could simply let it dry, or I thought I could explore and have a peek under the shell. After much thought, I decided to give it a wash in warm water. Unfortunately, or depending on how you look at it, fortunately, the crust was not stable and rinsed off easily. But underneath lay this wonderful green. I was very taken with that brilliant lemon olive green and decided to stop and play for a bit. So I cooked up some more samples. Some I cooked for 10 days and some I cooked for 20 days. Some I allowed to dry for 24 hours, then scrubbed the crusty top layer off. Some I allowed to dry for one hour and carefully picked with a pair of tweezers most of the crust away, leaving a wet lower layer to dry and form the patina. Some I simply allowed to dry. Some I allowed to dry for 24 hours, soaked in warm water for 12 hours, then gently removed most of the crusty top, mindful not to remove the delicate lower layer of the patina. What a wonderful range of effects, completely and wholly different from anything we've seen so far. Let's have a closer look at some of my favorites. These patinas really illustrate the building and forming of layer over layer of patina. They are earthy and ancient, cloudy and stormy, abstract picturesque, and at times iridescent. Let's have a side-by-side -side comparison. I am astounded by ammonia. I never would have guessed so many patina effects could be possible through simple ammonia fuming. From spacey to rustic to vivid greens to moody blues, from crunchy to smooth, from pictorial landscapes to lightning-filled skies, the range of color, texture, and imagery 
is phenomenal, and yet I feel I've only just begun to know ammonia. I truly believe I could spend the next year exploring ammonia all by itself and never get bored. But it was time to move on and introduce ammonia to salt. Actually, I spent a bit of time playing with salt, then came back for a little bit more alone time with ammonia. With the first set of ammonia-only samples, which I cooked for 20 days, I noticed the patina was quite thick and looked a bit muddy. Muddy? Yes, thick and muddy. I kept wondering if I could manipulate the patina mud before it could dry. So I cooked up some more samples. The first sample I cooked for 20 days. Carefully transferred the wet patina to a fume chamber with no ammonia in it. Trust me, you don't want to suck up those ammonia fumes. Then let dry for 10 minutes. Then poked my finger in it. Hmm, more sticky than muddy. And then I poked some more. And a little bit more. And then a little bit more. As it turned out, once the top layer was poked through, the bottom layer was quite muddy and very stainy. So I put on some gloves and carefully flipped the patina over and poked it with a bit of rolled up paper towel. Let dry for 24 hours and the result? Ooh, yeah, this is a bit of fun. I'm going to pause here. We need to talk about hanging mechanism imprints and cross-contamination. Because the hanging mechanisms I used are made of copper, they will patina. That patina on the copper wires can cross-contaminate the next patina. And because I reused those copper wires over and over again, although I did give them a clean in between, there was some cross-contamination, which does affect the patina, plus the wires themselves can leave an imprint. I considered trying a new hanging method, but decided to continue with the copper wires as they were easy to use and I was going to be cooking up hundreds of samples. Plus, I was curious to see if the marks from the copper wires could be exploited and incorporated into the design. Ooh, how? We'll learn more about that in and around class 20 where we'll explore advanced patina manipulation. I quickly cooked up a second sample with a cook time of 20 days. This time I allowed no drying time, popped it directly into some nice warm water, and soaked for five minutes. Then gave a shake to see what would come off, then gently brushed off some of the top layers, a little more shaky shaky, flipped the patina over, a little more brushy brushy, and more shaky shaky, and some flicky flicky. Then let dry for 24 hours. And the result? Who would have thought this vibrant patina was hiding under that dark crust? I cooked up a third sample, this time for 30 days. I wanted more mud. After 30 days, the top crust was quite thick and somewhat dry. So I scrubbed the patina in warm water. The crust of the patina was very solid and did not want to come off, but I was persistent and eventually a bit of the top crust started to wear away. And of course, I completely forgot about the green staininess of this patina. So I stopped scrubbing, decided to let the patina soak in warm water for 30 minutes, washed my hands, put some gloves on, and continued to scrub. This time a whole chunk of the patina came off, so I stopped scrubbing the patina and allowed to dry for 24 hours. And the result? Wow, look how thick this patina is. And remember that whole chunk that came off? The patina mud was so thick, there's a noticeable difference in thicknesses throughout the entire patina. I cooked up a fourth patina. This time, I got painterly. Using a bit of warm water and a paintbrush, I played with the mud. Looks like you forgot all about those ammonia fumes. Yes, and it was awful. But I didn't want to stop filming, so I continued on. Although, I did swap it out for an empty fume chamber as soon as I could and let dry for 24 hours. 
The result? There's a lot of fun to be had manipulating patina mud. <laughs>